Hi, I'm clinical psychologist Dr. Michael Yapko, and I recently completed the fourth edition of my hypnosis textbook, Trance Work, an introduction to the practice of clinical hypnosis. It's out from Rutledge Publishers, and I'm very excited about it. One of the things that I'm most excited about is that the book contains a foreword from Professor Peter Sheehan, who is a close friend and colleague of mine of many years. Peter is an Australian psychologist and researcher, and he has been a prolific writer and contributor to the field of hypnosis in one very specific domain, namely the phenomenology of the experience of hypnosis. As you probably know if you have an interest in hypnosis, there are different models of hypnosis, different views of hypnosis, different ways of characterizing the nature of hypnosis and hypnotic phenomena. Well, when you look at one of the models of hypnosis that is very common, it's a practice in which the hypnotist simply offers suggestions to a client who's sitting there with their eyes closed. And in essence, the hypnotist offers a lot of directives and ideas to the person, but doesn't really interact with the person and doesn't really know what the person's internal experience happens to be. Well, even in the realm of standardized hypnosis testing, very often it's simply an induction and then asking the person to perform several different kinds of behaviors or perceptual experiments. And again, you don't really know what the person's experience is on a subjective level. Well, for Peter Sheehan, this was really unacceptable. He wanted to know something about the meaning of the experience for the person, the quality of the subjective experience of the person, and that is, by definition, the study of phenomenology. And so Peter helped develop a widely used test called the experiential analysis technique, which he used in his own research. Hypnosis in Australia is a very well-developed phenomenon, and in fact, Peter ran what is the, probably the most highly regarded hypnosis lab in Australia for more than two decades. So he is a prolific writer and a prolific researcher. But it's particularly his exploration of and consideration of the phenomenology of hypnosis that I find the most intriguing. It parallels well with what Milton Erickson was doing in his approach to hypnosis, which was highly interactive. He would talk to the person during the hypnotic experience to find out what the person was learning, what the person was hearing, what the person was experiencing. And so this kind of phenomenological approach, I think, is immediately relevant to modern clinical practice. Well, this interview with Peter was filmed in his home in Brisbane, Australia on April 12, 2011. Peter and I spoke for roughly an hour on camera about many different facets of his development of interest in the field of hypnosis, his early training experiences, his experiences with the seminal uh, researcher and contributor, pioneering psychiatrist Martin Orne to the field, as well as his experience with many other notables in the young field of hypnosis research. And so I offer this video, place it on YouTube for people to have access to for historical purposes, for curiosity, to help acquaint people with the importance of phenomenology as a domain of inquiry. So I hope you will enjoy viewing this film as much as I enjoyed making it. I think you're really going to enjoy Peter Sheehan, his humble and understated ways, but his incredibly sharp intellect. This is a man who knows a lot, and I hope that you get that flavor in listening to this interview. Enjoy. How and when did you get interested in hypnosis? I find my uh, attraction to psychology, and I know that's have to come at your question indirectly. Uh, and I, I think this often happens. Uh, I started off with a degree <clears throat> and then I tended to do uh, well at psychology and because of that drifted into psychology then went on into honours with it and I was associated with some 
very significant people who done happen to have done work in hypnosis. And that is Gordon Hammer, uh, who I found a very influential teacher for me uh, in my undergraduate days, and Phil Sutcliffe. I worked at uh, PhD with Phil Sutcliffe as my supervisor. Phil had network connections with Martin Orne and very quickly I got drawn into a very extensive program of research. It was funded in Australia and then through the network and the associations and working with Phil Sutcliffe, I then went across to work with uh, Martin Orne in Philadelphia. How did that actually come about? You contacted Martin Warren and wanted to no, work I, in the lab, or how did that work? No, no, I think Phil said, look, uh, there's a guy here that might be useful for you to have. And so uh, I roomed with somebody else who also went across a little later. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think because of that connection between <coughs> Phil, perhaps Gordon Hammer, and Phil, uh, with Martin Orne. Martin had come to Australia. Uh, it was a very stimulating program of research. And basically, uh, it was in the analysis of visual imagery, but I tacked on to that. One of the corals of imagery was susceptibility to hypnosis. That slotted directly into individual differences in susceptibility. Uh, I was prepared to go across to work overseas, and I found my period in the States, both at, with Martin and with City College, uh, an enormously stimulating experience. 